Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so let's talk about this because um, out of all the fights on the undercard, I think this fight was the least ex uh, fight, the matchup I was least excited about, and for good reason. And that was uh, Shakram Giyashov, you know, from Uzbekistan, the Wonder Boy against Pablo Cesar Cano. You know, the same Pablo Cesar Cano who hasn't really done much competing at welterweight. Um, I believe the fight was for like an eliminator because now uh, Giyashov wound up winning the fight by UD and he's the number one contender in the division and he's actually gonna be in line to fight Stanionis for the like regular title, right? So make it that what you will. But, you know, so Cano, you know, a lot, a lot could be said about, you know, if did, did Cano really deserve a fight at this level, he's not really a credible welterweight, but, you know, we know Cano comes to fight. He's a veteran. He, he knocked out Lenares in a big upset like five years ago. Um, I, res I respect Pablo Cesar Cano, but let's talk about Giyashov because Giyashov's last fight, he fought a guy from my area in South Florida, Harold Calderon. And Harold and Giyashov, I thought, put on a very underwhelming welterweight fight. It was, it was a very bad fight forgettable fight Yishov has been underwhelming a lot in his performances like, like, like he's winning which is the important thing for him but he's not really giving people a reason to get excited about him or talk about him when he's not fighting you know and this fight was no different you know Cano came forward he was trying to be the pressure fighter on the front foot Yishov I think did an effective job of, of, of keeping him at bay and boxing him but he just didn't show that extra bit of quality. Like he didn't show the the punching power or the or the combination punching or any of the things that you're probably looking for. You know, as far as him being a standout guy at welterweight, right? So he won a very boring UD um, over Cano. He now is going to be number one contender against uh, and, and probably fight Stanionis because look. It's fully anticipated that, that Terrence Crawford at some point is going to vacate the titles. Terrence Crawford is going to vacate the belts. The belts are fragment, and Gia Shaw will wind up fighting Stanionis for the full title. Now, let's let's unpack that fight, right? Because there's not really a whole lot to talk about with, with the Pablo Cesar Cano fight. I thought Cano in the in the in the little pockets of the fight where he was able to turn the volume up, up in the punches and really put real pressure on Gia Shop. You saw Gia Shop be uncomfortable. You saw Gia Shop not like it. You saw Gia Shop grimace a little bit when punches landed to the body. But, you know, Pablo Cesar Cano, he's not really a natural welterweight. Um, and he's old. I mean, he's older. He's an older fighter. So you, he can't really pull the trigger like he probably could five years ago when he fought Linares. So it is what it is. But... Gia Shaw versus Stanionis is an interesting fight. Stanionis hasn't been very active. Stanionis, I don't think, will be that match fit, fit by the time they do fight. So I give Gia Shaw a, slight, a slightly bigger chance to win because of that reason. But Gia Shaw needs to do something. Because this is a guy that, when Matchroom signed him, he was a big prospect. He was a guy that people were talking about being a star on the welterweight division. And every time I watched him fight, he's won, which is the, which is the important thing. He's been effective, which is the important thing, but he hasn't been sensational. He hasn't really been a guy that's been overly memorable for the right reasons. And um, he's already Uzbek, right? And I'm just calling a spade a spade. These Uzbek fighters, before they even start fighting, they're up against it because most of them can't speak English, so their marketability is only but so high. Then a lot of them are really good, so. You know, the guy, you know, they're high risk, low reward. But now he's got all those things going against him and he's not exciting to watch. I mean, come on, man. At least, at least with guys like Odebek Komatov from Uzbekistan, them guys, he's exciting to watch. So he can overcompensate for what he does, what he, for what he doesn't have speaking English or being a high risk, low reward fighter. He, he makes up for it by, by, by being an exciting fighter. And that's why Top Rank signed him. And that's why he's the A side in the Remember Remember Four fight. Giyashov doesn't even have the excitement factor going for him. So, um, not trying to put him down, but it's just, it's just it's a sad state of affairs in the welterweight division right now that the fact that he's going to get a WBA title shot. I mean, 
I don't know what it is with these Uzbeks. Like, I, and I love the Uzbeks, but I don't understand why is all the all the all the Uzbeks, uh, Komatov, Merjan, and now Gieshov, they are all getting. They're either all getting, or they're gonna be in position to get like a mandatory shot to be to get a world title, and it's all with the WBA. So something's going on with the WBA and the Uzbek fighters, and I, I need to figure out what it is because it's it's real interesting. But um, I think. I think Stanionis has the physical strength. I think he has the volume. I think he has the power to really make life a living hell for uh, Stanionis because, or not for, for Gieshoff, because Gieshoff is, uh, he don't like pressure. And he don't like it touch the body, you know? So it is, but yeah, like I was saying, it, it is what it is. Um, Gieshoff, he's effective. He's a good fighter. I'm not going to say he's trash, but he's just not, sensational he's not the guy that um matchroom boxing and eddie Hearn were selling to me three four years ago when they did that show in uzbekistan and and um his hype in boxing was a little higher than it is now you know he's had way too many rounds of unmemorable boxing and um i'm hoping listen maybe he's one of those guys that is only performing that way because they're putting you know pretty subpar guys in front of him guys like call their own guys like cano you know they're not on his level so maybe maybe when he, when he fights a standing honest i'll give him the, we'll see what he does we'll, we'll see what he does when he fights an elite guy but right now gi is shopping cutting the mustard and he's making uzbekistan boxing look um not the best and i like i like the uzbeks i like you know y'all know y'all know I, have a, I i do have an affinity for the russians and the uzbeks and the central asian you know i like I, I'm, I'm a boxing fan so i like fighters from everywhere but um let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think about Gieshaw's performance against Pablo Cesar Cano? And what do you guys think about him fighting for the vacant title against Imantas Stanionis? Leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniels. So until next time, take your ass. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure to subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.